You are watching the Movacon HMI Editor Basics self-guided video tutorial series. In this video, you'll create placeholders for each screen in the main project. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. For this video, I'm assuming you have already completed the previous videos in this series. By the end of this section, you'll have the header screen done, as well as the five main screens, which will be blank, and a control panel, and a blank navigation bar. And here's what I mean by that. We'll use this resource browser to go between the auto screen, the, the setup screen, jog zero screen. You can see it's changing here. Of course, you see the header screen is down here. I've got an image with a title. And the control panel and navigation bar are just placeholders at this time. So here's how it works. All of the five main screens will have the dimensions to fill the entire HMI. And then you will embed these other screens, like the control panel, the header, and the navigation bar, with uh, these calculated dimensions here. We'll do 50 pixels high. Uh, the header will be 600 wide. Navigation will be the full 800. And then the remaining here, control panel, 200 by 430. These smaller screens are embedded on top of the main screens. The first step will be to make those main screens and uh, label them so you keep track of them. Here in the project, I even find it helpful to number them. The auto, setup, jog zero, alarms, and recipes. You'll make all these. But header, control, and navigation are what we call embedded view. Okay, so you'll go down here to objects and choose embedded view. That lets you put one screen inside of another. For example, I could put the header screen in here again, and uh, you just have to make it about the right shape, and the selected screen will fill that embedded view. Okay, I'll get rid of that. And once you have it done for one of the main screens, you can easily just copy, and then let's say this screen didn't have that yet, I'll delete it. You can just paste that in there. It's easy enough to uh, just copy that from one screen to the next. The header bar is pretty easy, so we're going to take care of that one here too. It's just some uh, text and an image inside of a rectangle. So the mini lab will show you exactly what properties you set in order to make this look appropriate. And since we don't have any navigation buttons in this section, we'll do that in the next section. But you'll, you'll just run it here as a test and then use that resource browser as a way to navigate to the screen that you want to use. As before, please open up the mini lab and use this as your guide to get this done. You can pause the video now and resume to see me run through these steps myself. Okay, I'm back and I'm going to go through this project layout mini lab. Let's start here with uh, just creating the five main screens. Starting with the auto screen, you just right click on the screens here and add a new screen. We'll call it one underscore auto. And just so we can distinguish the different screens here without completely building them out, I'm gonna put uh, the word auto in here. That's under toolbox text. I'll just draw a little text box. Then you have to click on there. You click once to get into text mode and then you can Double click to uh, highlight, call this auto, and you could adjust this to maybe size 16. Doesn't really matter, but just so it's easy enough to see, I'll use yellow. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, there we go. Now I'm gonna copy and paste for a total of five screens from the Project Explorer. So here in screens, I'll uh, copy. I'll use Control V to paste one, two, three, four, for a total of five. Let's just rename these here real quick. We got two underscore setup, three underscore jog hyphen zero. Click once, click again. We got four underscore alarms and five underscore recipes. And like it says here, you can right click to apply the new name to get rid of that uh, parentheses. It remembers the old name. It's kind of like what we had with the variables before. Uh, it says resources must be closed and uh, reopened. Hit yes, it's closing those tabs and then it's reopening them. 
So you could do this one by one. There's another way to do it. You can just close them all and go to the Edit menu, Apply Renamed Variables and Resources, like we did before. The key is that you have to have those screens closed first, and then it doesn't look like it did anything until you click on it and it refreshes. Next, we just need to edit those text boxes to be sure they actually say what they are. So Auto, Auto says Auto, Setup still says Auto, so let's change that one. Setup, Jog 0, Jog 0. Let's open Alarms, Alarms is open. And Recipes, Recipes. So what you can do is just look at each of the tabs that you've opened. Be sure you have one for each screen and then it matches the tab with the text up here. So these were the main screens. Now we have to uh, embed those three embedded screens into the main screens. So let's just start with the header, I guess. Right click a new screen called header. But we needed this to be a skinny screen that was 50 high by 600 wide. That'll be under properties general. Okay, so properties general. Yeah, width was up to be 600. The height for these was 50 and hit the checkbox to see if that looks about right. I think so. And then what I can do here is to copy one of these text boxes and uh, paste it in here. This is just a header. Keep track of it. That was step C. Uh, up to step D, create the navigation screen from the header screen or create a new one. Right, so we could just uh, copy this header like we did before. Just trying to show you a variety of ways to do this. You could copy and paste since it's almost the same size. Maybe you'll save a little time here with navigation. And let's open that one. Navigation, change the text. Navigation. But for this one, the width was wider, 800, the entire bottom of the screen. It's going to be sized. Do you want to scale? No, I don't want to scale. Let's just leave it all alone. Okay. Zooming there with control scroll wheel. Now step E, create the control screen. I'll just insert that one new here. Add a new screen. Control. The width was 200. The height is 430. And I wanted these to be a different color. Change the background color. You can just select them all here in the tree. So I'll do control click on each of these and set the back color. You can choose any color you want. I think I'll choose this dark gray. And the checkbox shows that now has been applied. We've got all the screens now, but it's just a matter of inserting these smaller screens as embedded screens onto the main screen, such as auto. So how about we start with auto and then we'll copy that to the other four. Starting with the header, we'll embed the header onto the auto screen. I'll open the auto screen and choose the toolbox embedded view. All right, so toolbox here under objects, you've got embedded view. And what I like to do is try to draw it in the approximate shape and location that it's going to be. And then you just choose the, the header. Okay, it says header already. Now where do you set the size? The size is under properties, position, width, and height. Okay, so we'll go to the header and let's look for position. We have width and height. Oh, I got lucky. I've got a good eye. 600 by 50. You can make the embedded screen a different size. It'll just shrink or expand that screen to fit the dimensions that you put in there. In step C, the way we wanted it to look was to show the actual background color. You can tell here in the, the header, we made it with a gray background, but now that it's been inserted here onto auto, it doesn't show that background. That's another property under style called show background. Hit that apply button. Yeah, that's how I want it to look. So I just need to repeat this for control and navigation. Draw in another embedded view for the navigation down here. Navigation. Let's see how good I got on the width and height. Oh, pretty good there, 800 by 50. You know, you can always just change the height that way or, or type it in. Sometimes it's just it's easy to type it in there and hit apply to see where it ends up. And I'll add one more embedded view for the control panel. That one looks like I'm off by 10 here. It was 200 by 430. Enter. And let's see, is that up in the top corner? Yes. I don't have the embedded view on it. 
Why doesn't it say control? Maybe I don't have the text. Yes, I don't. So let's copy one of those. Take that here to control. And this brings up a good point. Although I updated the control screen, it doesn't show it here. And there's two ways around that. The easiest way is simply to delete it and then control Z undo and it refreshes the view. You could also just completely close the software and open this project again, but that takes a little longer. So if that bothers you, otherwise you can rest assured that whatever you do change on the screen, the embedded view may not have been refreshed, but it is updated in the embedded view also. Okay, I'm going to show the background on these and I'll control select. Sometimes when you control select the second uh, object, it's not uh, very clear that you did select it. But if you look at these little handles, I can tell I do have the navigation screen selected in addition to the control screen. Now I just set the property here, show background. And I think that looks right. Pretty close. So if it looks good on one, you just copy that assembly to the other screens using control select. So I'm gonna hit the header screen and then control click the control screen and the navigation screen. I will copy and then go to uh, the other main screens here. Setup, paste, jog zero, paste, alarms, paste, recipes, paste. That part is done. Let's finish this off here with the header screen. Insert a rectangle to contain the image. Now be sure that you don't try to build or edit the header screen within the embedded view. Be sure you go to the actual template for the screen itself. So here I am on the header screen and the image will be contained in a rectangle. That's under toolbox basic shapes rectangle. Okay, basic shapes rectangle and then draw that in approximately where you want the image. I want my logo right there. Remove the border from the stroke attributes border style. Okay. Properties stroke attributes border style of uh, null. You apply that to see the result and yeah, no more border. Okay. Now the background will contain the image and with a, uh, a null fill, they call it brush style. So that's background attributes, brush style and static image. Select the rectangle and here's the background attributes. Brush style was null. Check that. Yeah, that made it clear, transparent background. The static image, let's go find an image. Now we've provided this PNG file with the transparent background. You can use any image file that you would like. If you have your own logo, that's great. Or you can use Yaskawa. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Obviously it's too large, which is why you would do image alignment of stretched. Okay, it's stretched, but that has made the logo the wrong aspect ratio. So just keep proportions there to keep the image just as it was. You know, I think this could be a little bigger. Stretch that out a little bit. Okay, I think that looks good. Moving on here to step D, it says adjust the header and text to your name and organization. That'll be Matt Pelletier, Yaskawa, Technical Training Services, TTS. And then uh, just format that however you like. This will help us for certification purposes when we want to identify the demo that you're working on. And I think I'll go with the color scheme here of white. That is the end of the header. So let's verify operation in runtime with the start project button. Yeah, save changes. Okay. Okay to the eval mode. Now the first thing you see here is, you know, why does it look like this? Well, the screen that I had up, the screen I was editing was the header screen. So it just shows the header screen in the entire area. You want to find this floating demo mode toolbar, which uh, may be at the top, the very top of your screen, or it may be on a different screen. So look around for it. It's kind of small. And then it has a lot of uh, different debug features, and we'll get into them here little by little. The first one I want to point out is this one here, open a screen. You can always force open any screen at any time when you're in the, the runtime here in demo mode with this button. It's pretty obvious, just double click on the screen you want to navigate to. And this is how you know how it will look. 
So you should be able to uh, navigate to each of these one by one. Here's number one, number two is setup, number three is jog zero. It's really important you have all these working so that when you use the navigation buttons and the next step, you won't have any confusion because all of your screens will already be here and you know that they do work. And if for some reason they don't work, uh, you'll be able to force your way into them here with this little tool. Okay, and of course you can try control, but it'll just fill the screen here, or header, just like I was saying before, it'll just fill the screen. So those aren't very useful. Those were intended to be embedded screens. So just uh, go to the main screens here and be sure that they all work and they all have everything they're supposed to have, arranged appropriately and sized accordingly. I tried to point out the uh, trouble areas as we went through it, but most common I find that uh, people just maybe get the dimensions messed up or they've got the screens me messed up when they did a copy paste. So be sure those dimensions are correct both in the embedded view and in the actual screen itself. Now back in the editor, I do have a couple more troubleshooting tips. And the first one is to delete a screen. What you do is select it in the tree and hit the delete key. Now this one won't delete because I have it open. So you have to close the tab, then select it and hit the delete key and it just disappears. Of course, there is always undo if you do that by mistake. And to put it back in alphabetical order, just collapse and reopen the screens area. There's another easy mistake I want to cover at this point, and I'll talk about it again later also. But that is to make sure you always select an object before you change its properties. This is especially true if you're navigating between different screens and selecting objects. For example, here I've selected this rectangle and it says its object title is jog zero. If I go back to the other screen, it looks like that rectangle is selected and you might think, oh, it's got the wrong title, jog zero, but that's actually the rectangle from the other tab. So if I change this one and say, oh, I must have made a mistake, it should be called alarms. Now I'll go back to jog zero and I've unintentionally changed the text in the wrong screen. The solution is to be sure you click on the object before you change any properties. And that's especially true when you're navigating between different tabs. This is the end of the Project Layout Mini Lab. Thank you for watching this video, and please go to www.yaskawa.com HMI for more information on Yaskawa's HMI products and Movicon HMI Editor.